All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and we're back for more Steam-related tutorial action here today. Today we're going to be checking out the Steam settings. If you go to the upper left-hand corner and you go under Steam, you got stuff like Change Account, where you log out and you log back in on a different account. You can go into Offline Mode, where you're not actually connected to the internet, but... Technically, you still are because certain features still work, but if you happen to lose connection, they won't freak out on you. You've got all these other options here, but we're interested in the settings panel. So what are the settings panel? These are things that control a variety of different stuff. One of them is it talks about what your contact email is, your status in the VAC system, and that is if you have a VAC ban for using cheats or not. Uh, if you have anything of information here that you want to see more info on, you can click on your status and it'll link you to a page talking about your history, if you've had any VAC ban information. When It's kind of like YouTube, I'm guessing, where if you've had one but you're a good boy or girl for a long enough period of time, they'll let you back into the clubhouse. Uh, you got your security status. You can manage your Steam Guard security, change your password, change your contact email, all that jazz here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Family, this is your family share settings. This is where all of your family share eligible accounts will show up. If somebody is sharing your account to play some of your games when you're offline, they'll show up in this list. You can either disable them or enable them here. So if they're in this little list, you can uncheck them and then Steam will remove them. You can also just disable the entire thing and then no one can share your games. Uh, and the in-game settings, these are the settings that control things related to your Steam overlay. Things from in the game. So from the top, these are enable the Steam overlay while you're playing the game. If you find you don't ever use these features, the Steam overlay can slightly lag your game. It's less of an issue on newer computers, but if you're having some instability problems with a newer game or like an early access game, this might be why. So you can disable that here at the top. You can set it up so that when you're using a controller, it enters big picture mode so that it's a little easier and more full screen to scroll around. Personally, I like to use that for very specific stuff. So I disable that until I want it. Uh, and this one down here, use desktop game theater when launching the desktop games while in VR uh, is active. That's here. That just means that people can see what's going on in your VR headset on the screen. Super helpful if you got other people in the room. You can set up what shortcut opens the Steam overlay, what button over here lets you take screenshots with the Steam overlay, and what folder that they end up in by clicking the screenshot folder. You can say, when you take a screenshot, do you display a notification, play a sound, or save an uncompressed copy somewhere on your computer? You can turn on or off the FPS counter and make it a high contrast color based upon what's on the screen. You can filter what's going on in chat, which will just, you know, make it so you can't see profanity and naughty naughty swear words. You can do ping testing, server browser pings per minute, and then Steam networking. Allow games using Steam networking to share my IP address for faster connection. I just leave this default. This used to be more of an issue, I'm guessing, before, but I've never had to change the setting or seen anyone recommend changing it. So I'm guessing it's not really a big deal. Under interface, you've got some more information here. This is like a lot of accessibility stuff. What language do you want this in? Pre-select what Steam page opens when you first open the program. In fact, I'm actually gonna change that to library. Because most of the time when I open Steam, I want the library before I want the store. Um, do you wanna use a Steam skin? You got the default skin. You can also install other skins for Steam. There's websites out there that let you make them for free. So you just upload like a picture and then it'll do all the code for you. Then you can install it on your computer with a couple clicks. Uh, scale text to match the size of your window. I love that because bigger equals bigger text, easier to read. You could also set that up somewhere, I'm sure, where you could actually set like a hard size. Start Steam in big picture mode. Again, I'm not a big fan of big picture mode all the time, just for specific settings. Display web address at the top of the screen. That's like when you're in the store over here. It'll show you the web address at the top because Steam is just a big web browser. 
Uh, enable GPU accelerator rendering. This is great because it uses your graphics card to make things look a and run a little smoother. Enable hardware video decoding. Same thing, makes it run a little bit smoother by using your hardware directly instead of just emulating it with software. Enable direct write for improved font smoothing. That's always great for nice crisp fonts and letters so you can actually read stuff. Depending on your setup and your monitor, it can be a little pixely. Uh, notify me about additional changes to my games, releases, and upcoming releases. That's always nice to know what's going on news-wise. Then you can set taskbar preferences with this. So this, when you right-click stuff, more specifically your game launcher, this will be all pops up for options to click on. Underneath of library, display font size, you can say small, medium, or large. Oh, you know, that's actually really nice. I might say, like, large. Um, do you want low bandwidth mode because you have a slow connection? Do you want low performance mode because you're on a slow computer? You can disable community content if for whatever reason it's a pain in the butt. And then show game icons in the left column. That's always nice for quick uh, identification of your games. Downloads. Do you want to set a specific place to download your games to? I have a different hard drive than my main drive where all mine gets sent to. As a good example, you can click this button to tell Steam where to install your games. You can set your download region. And then down here, you can even set a throttling limit on how fast your Steam can download games, which is really nice if you want to be downloading games while you work, but not completely destroying your internet. And then you can clear your download cache of any excessive, unnecessary stuff that might be lingering. Cloud, do you want to enable Steam Cloud synchronization to save your stuff to the cloud? Absolutely. Me personally, I don't really do a lot of in-game screenshotting with Steam. I share with things like Yazo, so I don't use this anymore. But if you want to, like, as you take screenshots in your game, have the option when you close the game to upload a few of them, you can with this little button here. Music, do you want to run some music while you're playing? Those controls are right here. You can scan a little database for new soundtracks here at startup. And then you can set the volume when you start. You can pause the music when starting an application, downloading high quality audio files when voice chatting. You can scan activity logs and then you can display a notification when a new track begins. I might actually turn that off. I mean, you can literally hear when a new track starts because there's a new track starting. Seems kind of redundant to me. Broadcasting, uh, Steam lets you stream to other people now. So for privacy reasons and because my internet is slow, I've got it set to only friends can request to watch my games. And then what video dimensions do you want to try to stream in? My internet's really slow right now, so 360p maybe is as good as it's going to get. And you can set a maximum bitrate to upload with when sending that video up to the Steam servers. You can optimize it for best performance or best quality. You can set where the viewer chats appear in some corner of your screen here or turn it off. And then you can also set to record video from applications on this machine, record audio from applications on this machine, record my microphone, show upload stats. So basically it's kind of like a miniature Twitch streaming thing where you can log into a, a game's store page and if there's a popular stream going on, you can click it as kind of like a preview before you buy the product. This is remote play is kind of a combination thing. This allows you to play remotely with other computers and also via your Steam link. So if you have a Steam link, you can pair that device here and then send this to like your TV and control everything via the Steam link. And then it's basically just like running a cable from your computer to a TV. You can pair it, unpair it, set security code. You can allow direct connection for IP sharing here. You can say automatic, disabled, my devices, all devices. You got hosting options. This takes you into whether well, all the different. Whoa. OK, calm down, Steam. So this controls all of the different things that you're allowing to happen when you're hosting. You can play audio on the host, change desktop resolutions, dynamically adjust capture resolutions, enable a different type of capture which works specifically on NVIDIA GPUs that uses the NVENC protocol. That's what this uses. 
You've got enable hardware encoding, enable hardware encoding on NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. I would say use these because hardware encoding usually is pretty well uh, tested and it makes things run smoother. And then a number of software encoding threads, you can say automatic, which is a good idea because then the computer can decide how much it wants to use without throttling you. And then you can prioritize this network traffic over other network traffic. So part of Steam and their setup is that it's a web browser, like I was saying before. So like any web browser, if you're going to like browse the web web through it, you can set your home page. You can allow the desktop web browsers to automatically log into Steam sites. And then you can delete your browser cache and you can delete the cookies. Pretty simple stuff. If you've got a web browser and you've ever cleared out your cache files and all the other files it saves, same idea. It builds up. Kind of like junk in your trunk, good to clear it out once in a while. Controller settings are kind of in-depth. Basically, if you've paired a controller to your computer and you want to use it with Steam, you'll find those here. You can see controller settings here in a really big window. And then this is kind of its own thing I'll have to walk through in its own video because that's a little bit much for the general purpose settings for Steam. But suffice it to say, you can set up profiles for your controllers. So you can say, in this game, I want this control button set up. And I want this control button set up in another one. It supports most of the big popular controllers pretty well. And I say pretty well, because I've had it break and I've known lots of people, both in the comments of the other videos that I've made about it and in my life who have said it breaks, but it's it works okay. It's better than nothing especially if you use a PS4 controller or something else. And then shader pre-caching. Shader pre-caching allows Steam to download pre-compiled GPU shaders matching your system's configuration. So basically this is just pre-downloading stuff to make your graphics look gorgeous and it helps to stabilize things and it helps to make things run smoother. I enable pre-shader pre-caching because it was already set up. So it's nice. Uh, so it's nice, but if you have a good graphics card, it might not necessarily be n that important. And if you have Vulkan, which I don't, because I'm pretty sure that's AMD, you can click to allow background processing of Vulkan shaders. So that pretty much runs through the general purpose gist of all of these settings here in the Steam settings panel. There's a lot to go through, but honestly, for most people, except for maybe like remote play in the controllers. Most of this stuff is pretty straightforward. Do you want this feature? Turn it on. Do you not? Turn it off. Pretty straightforward. So if you have any questions, if you need some clarification on some of these settings, I kind of ripped through these pretty quickly to make this video a little bit shorter. Please let me know. Uh, it's also important to note that Steam has a pretty good fact section on their website. So if you need to find anything, give it a Google. Most of the stuff that I deal with, most of the stuff that you'll ever deal with can just be Googled. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.